Hey y'all, happy Wednesday, my peaceful and profitable entrepreneurs. Um, it is our masterclass today, working through your stuff so you can sell more. Um, I know sometimes we have little ones around for these um, live streams, so I might actually use the actual word. I might There might be a little tiny bit of cussing in this, so I just wanted to give you a heads up uh, before we dive in. And I am in Charleston. We are preparing for the storm that will hit. Um, fortunately, it's not gonna be as bad as other areas, so I'm sending lots of love and the prayers and just wishing everyone safety, um, anyone who is more affected by the storm, really thinking about y'all, because being in Charleston, we know how that feels, and um, my heart really goes out to you. Um, I woke up this morning and had emails from schools that are, you know, hey, we're gonna be closed on Friday, and hey, guess what? Uh, there's lights in your kid's class, so. It's just like, thanks guys, um, way to make an interesting hurricane party. Um, but it'll be good. My daughter, my middle child, Marie, she turned six on Saturday. And so we were gonna have a beach birthday party and now we're kind of refiguring that and um, making a backup plan and just, you know, all the fun things. So if you're joining today, say hello. Um, anyone who comments or, hi Cheryl, speaking of which, nice to have you. Um, we're giving away a free coaching session with me. So that will be on Friday. So if you're catching the replay, you have time to leave a comment, ask a question, um, and we'll make sure that we get all of that answered. But um, I think that was it for housekeeping. Um, but yeah, I know it's just a little crazy around here. I was out running errands and I feel like everyone's kind of like, you know, loses their mind around this time when um, we have storms. So it's just always fun. But um, this is really important for me to speak about today because I I will tell, you know, personal experience for myself. I see it with my clients. Hi, Kate. So glad to have you. Thanks for joining. Um, hey, yay. Great to hear. Hi. Hello. Um, this is just so important for me to talk about and, you know, all the personal examples from me, feel free to chime in. I don't want to call anyone out or make, you know, put you on the spot, but if you feel free to share, um, you know, I think it would help everyone here because it's just such a common thing that we all go through. Um, and, you know, I've been, you know, I work high level with clients and that's why I love doing these master classes because I can't support everyone. I have three spots that are left. I have a 100% renewal rate. Um, my free calls are booked out through October. I just actually open more spots for those to do three a week now because they're just filling up so fast. Um, my intensives fill up every month, so I can't support everyone. So that's why these master classes are just like so important for me to do and um, give you the playbooks so that you can have a little more information because I can't support everyone and my services are not inexpensive. And so this is a way to really, you know, work together um, in a different way. So that's why I love doing these. And I realized with the free calls that I see people who start an online business or go into business and they have a little bit of initial success, which is amazing. Um, I'm not going to call it like beginner's luck or anything like that, but definitely they get to a point where like, yeah, it's working. It's all good. And then they like get stuck. Like they're just not getting to that next level that they want to get to. And you know, there's no magic bullet. There's no like one size fits all thing. But a lot of what I see, is that it's not necessarily strategy. I mean, there are definitely strategic things that I work on with my clients. Like there's always a strategic thing that we can not necessarily add, but test and tweak for something that they're already doing. Um, but definitely this like getting out of your own way, um, mindset and selling, you know, is like a really big one. Um, this group is called Peaceful and Profitable Entrepreneurs for a reason. Um, you know, profitable in order to create more profit, we need more revenue. In order to create more revenue, we need to sell. So this is like a really big thing um, that I just want to talk about and we'll go through everything. So feel free to share, um, you know, how you feel about selling. If you're like totally confident and love it, or if it's something you're growing to love, or if it's something you're like, oh, I just, Hope I show up and people need my services. Um, I'll talk about it more, but that's definitely kind of what I was taught as an accountant, as a bookkeeper. You know, my background is in accounting. I majored in accounting. I went the public accounting route. I did, you know, I'm a CPA. Um, I don't file taxes anymore, but I worked in public accounting and was always taught that good CPAs don't sell, that we do good work and by referrals, people will show up. And that's pretty much how I built my business for the first five years. I had one to three kids at home, so nap times and night times. Like I was just doing all the work I could during those times. And you know, referrals were great, but it also was very like 
uneasy because you never know when they're gonna show up. Like you have no control over if someone's gonna call you tomorrow or not that we have control now anyway, like none of us really have control, but when you have like a good system for selling and there are people that are always in some form of your sales process, like that feels so much better. I mean, just for me personally, I'm just like, oh, okay, it's not just like any day, like someone might fall out of the sky that maybe wants to work with me. Um, and so that's why I think it's so important to like really get out of our own way, be able to sell because we are doing people a disservice if we are not telling them what we have and how we can support them because someone else is gonna be saying it louder who's probably not as qualified as you and they're gonna go buy from that person. Whereas we are very heart centered and um, caring individuals and just because we're not saying it the loudest, you know, they might go for someone else. So the thing I wanna start with is a quote from Carl Jung and it's, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And I like, it gives me chills when I read that because I think it is just so true and something that we um, see in our life all the time. And so we're gonna kind of unpack that as we go along, but you know, this really comes back to like, we can say we want a lot of money, we can say we want all these things, but you know, if you don't really believe that you're worthy of that, if you don't really believe that you have the capacity to support those people, or whatever it is, like the revenue and the clients aren't gonna come. Like your being scared and afraid of it is going to outweigh the results that you want. Can you please post that in the comments? Yes, I definitely will. Um, until you make the unconscious conscious, conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So I'll put that in the comments um, after this, but yeah, it's just such a such a good point. Get tingles. Um, so yeah, thank you, Kate, for reminding me to do that. Um, but you know, you can say that you have these goals, you can say that you want big things, you can say you want to support all these clients, but if in the back of your mind, you don't really feel that that's possible or safe or true for you, then like, it's never going to happen. And I love affirmations. Like I say my affirmations every day. I have them recorded on my phone, do it while I'm walking. But like, if we are just like not dealing with the fears and the self limiting beliefs like that are like in the back of our brain, it's just like, you know, I don't know, putting glitter on poop, like we're just covering it up um, and it's just being suppressed and pushed down. And so the steps that we'll go through with the playbook, if you don't have the playbook, be sure to sign up and you'll get that. Um, there are steps that I go through that um, it's just a system I've created and a lot of it, you know, if I've pulled from different things. So at the end of the playbook, I like to give credit where credit is due because it's kind of like a hodgepodge of things that I do and that I um, have clients do that's really fun to work on. But, you know, a lot of people don't want to hear this. They don't want to do the work. They want to, yeah, everything's good. Think positive, do my affirmations and like, doing the deeper digging shadow work like no one's like yay i can't wait to do that like this is so much fun like let me just dig into my demons and dig up some stuff from childhood and see what happened and really see what's going on like nobody wants to do that like i you know i do it but it's not like i'm like yay you know really excited about it but i've seen the results i've seen the difference in my life and my business um, you know, because business is life. Like the way we do one thing is the way we do anything. So this has really affected me personally as well in a good way. And, um, you know, it's what I want to share with you today. So, um, and this is kind of like my, I'll go off on a side tangent for a second. My problem with the online space is that there's always someone who's going to sell you something for the problem that you need to fix. So, you know, maybe it's someone out there who's saying you need to grow your email list and you need to have this many people on here and buy this course, or you need to go on live streams more, or you need to post on Instagram stories more, or you need to do this. And I'm all for all of those things. But if you think that that is the only problem you need to solve, you're going to be spending time and resources on things that's really like, well, actually, I'm just scared of what people are going to think of me if I put myself on Instagram stories, or I'm scared to be on live streams, or I'm like scared to actually sell to people in my email group. Like you can go chase that thing and pay someone money and take this course. But if you like deep down have other issues going on, like the course, the free download, like I love a live stream, obviously, but like that's not going to just like solve the issue. Um, and that's what I talk to clients a lot. Like there's like all these shiny balls we can chase, but it's like, well, let's like dig a little deeper and see what's really going on versus like, Hey, let me just go sign up for this TikTok course. Um, because if you're just like really uncomfortable, like me, like back in like last fall, I did a ton of work with showing up online and 
what the story that I was told as a accountant, you know, like that felt so uncomfortable for me. And I was told that accountants don't sell way before social media existed. Like social media did not, was not like a thing back then. So those businesses are selling online now, you know, because that's what you do. But back then it wasn't a thing. So selling kind of had like a different connotation. Um, let's see. So, and this also comes to like wanting bigger revenue goals, but feeling that you're like bad with money or feeling that you're like afraid something bad is going to happen. Like I know a couple people I can think of that, um, one, she was married and she was getting a divorce and she was afraid that like her ex-husband was going to take all of her money. And so really until she dealt with that side of it, you know, her revenue didn't take off. Like once, you know, I'm not saying go get a divorce, but like once she got the divorce, her revenue took off because she was like not scared that like something bad was going to happen to it. Or someone who made a big expensive $10,000 mistake, they're like so afraid that they're not good with money. And so they're really afraid to like make more money because what if I go and make that mistake again? So um, these are just a couple examples of things that I've seen. Um, and this is why I think like one-to-one -one work is so important. And I love online courses and downloads and all that stuff, but really like the work, you know, that I just see with one-to-one -one just makes such a difference and how people can show up and work through their own shit. So that's what we're going to do today so that you can do it. If you're not working with me or a high level coach, like you can kind of do this work on your own. Um, and I think of it kind of like the next diet plan. Like you can always be looking for the next diet plan. You can always be looking for the next meal plan or exercise plan. But like, if you don't do the work around like, I eat when I get upset or whatever that is, then like, you know, all these plans work, but if you don't do the work to understand why they're not working for you, then like none of them are going to work. Um, I always love a good, um, diet plan um, <laughs> analogy. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and give you, um, an example from me in my life. And just, it's just about leaving your shit at the door because I, was talking to a potential client and like she owns multiple locations and she wants to scale and grow and franchise and I could help her so much. You know, like it's just the wheels are turning in my mind of all the things we can do and everything that really needs to be like getting in place. And you know, I sold to her on the call, but really like afterwards I had a lot of stickiness coming up about following up with her. Um, she was divorced. My parents are divorced and like I was on a walk and I just started crying because like, I felt like, should I follow up with her? Like, I know I can help her and I know I can like, like her business like needs this. Like it scares me the way that it's being run right now. And just like the growth potential that she has. Um, but just thinking about like my mom when she was divorced and you know, kind of the, some of the stuff she went through, like I really had this like shit come up that I had to deal with in order to like follow up with her properly like I could have phoned it in and like followed up with her but like this was like I really need to deal with this so that I can speak to her from like a real you know solid bear my heart I understand what you're going through and like I can so support you to like get to that franchise level so that's something that like really kind of you know kind of instigated this whole thing and she's now a client now and it's beautiful and it's so exciting um but you know, I really had to like leave my shit at the door so that I could show up for her and leave like what I had going on in my mind and what, you know, I went through, leave that behind. Um, so we'll walk through the playbook. Um, but I want to reiterate, don't, do not make yourself wrong. Like that is not what we're doing here. We all have this stuff happen. Um, so please just know that like these things coming up is just part of the human experience, but that doesn't mean we have to let it um, limit us. Um, and I know there's big T trauma and there's little T trauma and, you know, just because something is a little T trauma doesn't mean that it's not important and doesn't need to be dealt with and that it's not like, like we have the right to let that affect us and we have the right to work through that so that it doesn't. Um, so these are kind of, um, the steps that I want to walk through. Let me find my, where did my form go? Okay, here we go. So the first step, um, and y'all ask questions, you know, I love y'all being here. So leave some comments along the way if you need to, um, let me know if you need clarification on anything. Um, but the first step I like to do is just notice and ask why, you know, it's just first shining that light. That's so important. Like this week, every night, one of my kids has gotten up and has been scared of something. And it's not that I have to fix anything or change anything, but it's literally just like, you know, 
they're scared of the shadow. What is it? It's like, you know, this piece of clothing hanging down and it looks like a person to them or something looks like a bug on the wall. And it's like, I really don't have to like fix anything. It's literally just like shining the light on it and showing them what it is. And so that's kind of what we're doing here with just noticing and then asking why. Um, so I go through an example of ways to ask and I know that I pulled this from somewhere. Um, let's see. It's the Toyota production system. Um, so that's where this came from, the whole thing of asking why. Um, and really, you know, I kind of did this with myself. I did, um, yeah, I think like this is almost me in this example. I use like a therapist instead of me, but it's basically me, um, you know, just noticing the thought and the first step is to ask why. And you ask, you keep asking why. And this is something you can do yourself or your journaling or with like a really, I don't say special friend, someone that like is non-judgmental. Um, you know, this is like what I can do with my clients that they like have the safe space for. Um, but you know, this would be like, okay, I, and this was someone I talked to recently. They were literally doing the same job that they thought about doing on their own. And so for them, it felt really hard. Like, okay, what's your ideal client load? 15. Okay. Well, how does it feel about getting 15 clients? Does that feel easy? Does it feel oh, not so good? And they're like, it feels really hard. So that's when we started going through this route of like, she said, I'm not going to be able to, you know, get 15 clients if I go out on my own. And then it's like, well, why don't you think you'll be able to get 15 clients? Well, I don't know where they'll come from. And it goes through this whole thing in the playbook of like, keep asking yourself why, um, to really get to the root of the problem. So in the playbook we go through and it kind of comes down to like selling feels sleazy. Cause I know, um, like with bookkeepers and accountants, we always want to be in integrity. And this person was a therapist. So she didn't want to come off as like some yucky, sleazy therapist person. But um, really it got down to was like feeling like, would anyone want her services? Um, was basically what this all came down to. Um, and so, you know, that's where we really have to like look at our brains and see what it's telling us and then look at what kind of reality is like, you know, is it as bad as you think it's going to be? Or how can we think about how we're safe now? And this doesn't even really apply because it hasn't even really happened. And even if it did happen, like thinking about the fact that like I can handle that, like what if I put it out there and nobody wants it? Like, okay, I guess the worst thing would be like nobody liked it or nobody booked a call or nobody bought this, you know, like you can let your brain go to that worst case scenario and see that like it would be good. But I think that first step is to really like take some time and like ask yourself why until you get to the deeper reason. So let me know if you have comments or questions about that. Um, I can give another example or if you want to throw anything out there, um, you know, we'd love to like walk through it with you. Um, obviously, you don't have to share anything that you don't want to. Um, but really, you know, looking at like that last sentence of digging down into the whys and seeing like, what it's really about. Like for her, it wasn't really about like, you know, the clients feeling like hard to get or showing up online. It was really about like being vulnerable and no one wanting it. Um, and so that's when we really get to like see the insight that we should work through instead of like going to like take this class on TikTok and figure out how do I get on TikTok and get more people when it's really like, I just really feel like shit if someone doesn't like my stuff or want to buy from me and then going from there. So I hope this is all making sense. So please let me know um, if you have anything, because I always jump off of these things and I'm like, oh, there were like five other things I wanted to say about that. So um, y'all let me know if you have any other questions or anything that come up. Um, so step number two is to call out the fears. And again, this is something I got from uh, Lacey Sykes. And I think it's also from like someone else too. I think she got it from someone else, but it's like a fear inventory can't remember who it came from, but I've heard this in multiple places, but that was the first time I heard of it. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, makes perfect sense. Thank you. <laughs> just want to make sure I'm not like going on a rampage in the wrong direction and y'all are like, what, what is she talking about? But I have the playbook, so you've got it there in front of me too. And then, you know, let me know. So calling out the fear. So I love doing a fear audit, a fear inventory, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm all about being positive. I'm all about thinking positive. I'm all about affirmations. But if we keep pushing those fears down, like 
they're gonna have to come up. Um, you know, one of my things, I did a fear inventory this summer and like I was wanting to get fully booked out with clients. Like, you know, my kids are at school and I just like have the ability to support more people and just see like the massive results that people can get and changes. And um, part of what was coming up for me is like, I say I want these clients, but in the back of my head, I was actually scared to get clients because I had a lot of like fears around time. So my kids are, seven almost six and three and so especially with lockdown like it really like threw me for a loop and i still have like still recovering from like the time and being like there's never enough time and like feeling like i've got a million things to do and you don't know if the kids school is going to close down or we're going to get lice or someone's going to get sick you know like all these things and so it was just like i had to like write down all my fears about like yeah i'm saying i'm one of these clients but i'm also really scared of like well, what happens if i do and then like shit hits the fan and you know my kids are at home or whatever and so like I did a ton of work with fears and fear inventory where I'm really like I like to write down um my brain is afraid instead of like just writing down like there's not enough time or kids get sick and come home like my brain you know I write to write my brain is afraid that the kids will get sick and I'll have them at home or my brain is afraid we'll get COVID and we'll have to be on, you know, lockdown again or something like that instead of saying it like, because if I leave off that my brain is afraid part, then it kind of feels like an affirmation to me. So that's why I like to add that part in or, you know, I'm afraid of at the beginning and then just writing it all down and give yourself like a time. Like I like to do like five minutes. Um, because you write down a couple fears and you're kind of like, okay, I'm good. But if you set like a timer, like five minutes, I'm going to do this. You really start to uncover some shit. Like you like, oh, you're like, I didn't even really realize that was there. And you just keep writing and you make yourself keep going. And that's when the good stuff comes up. Um, because you know, as much as like, I'm still like time is a big thing for me. Um, and I know that. So like, I have it on my phone. I have it on my computer. Like I have these affirmations that are like, there's plenty of time and like I've literally learned that like time and space open up for me and that's one of my affirmations because like when stuff happens and like I feel like there's not time then it's like oh my mother-in-law offers to pick up the kids or oh this person reschedules or something like that like crazy stuff that like whew, okay there's always enough time and like doing that fear inventory really helped me get deep to know that like that was one of the issues because otherwise it was like well, what's to be afraid of like I have the time, my kids are at school, I have a few open spots, like, but it was really like doing that fear inventory that helped me figure out like what I'm afraid of. And then the more you do it, the more it feels like less scary. Um, so you could do it every day for a week or you could just do it until you're like riding those same fears and then you're kind of like, this doesn't even feel like a thing anymore. Like that doesn't really feel scary at all. Like. I'm good. And then you'll kind of maybe move on to different fears or take a break from it or, you know, whatever feels good to you, but really like shining the light on something, like not necessarily fixing or telling your brain it's wrong or saying that like, that's crazy. That doesn't make sense. Of course you have time. Like on paper, it looked like I had time and I did, but in my brain it was like, but what if, what if, what if? And so like, after I did that for a week, I was like, you yeah, know, I'm good. Yeah. Shit's going to hit the fan. School's gonna close, we're gonna get lice, and like, I'll figure it out. My clients are amazing. Like, they are totally okay to reschedule. They all have kids, like, it's totally fine. So that's something like, I'm just giving you a personal experience here, I don't know. Um, I think the example is, you know, going out on your own and not making, you know, getting clients or making money or having time with family. So that's kind of like what I went through. And that's something I, you know, as a parent and with the other parents I work with, um, moms especially who are kind of doing a side hustle or really just trying to like make income while they're like working with their family and everything, um, you know, that's something that gets kicked up is they're afraid they're going to get so busy that they're not going to be able to spend time with their family and until they like really acknowledge that and just see that that's there and really work through it until it's not a fear, like it's always going to be there. and you know, they'll self-consciously or subconsciously hold themselves back from um, getting more clients because they're like, well, what if I can't pick up my kids from school anymore? And that's what I love doing. And so um, I think the fear inventory, fear audit is just a great way to like, just let it all out. Don't try to hold it in, let it out, keep going, do it as often as you need um, to really just like let the fears just all come out. Like I said, you'll do a few and then you think you're done. But if you set the timer, 
you can just keep going is what I found. So that's what I wrote in the playbook. Feel free to keep doing it until the fears don't feel like a thing anymore. Um, it's literally like, yeah, that used to be a thing and now it's not. And you know, maybe now there's new things, but the third step, um, I like to do is shake it off. I give Taylor Swift all the credit for this. Um, but oh, Cheryl has a comment. Let's see. Selling my art is sometimes scary when I'm in my head too much. If anyone is going to like it. Yes. It's very personal. We work with photographers and artists and like, it's you and like, you know, people like me who have a service based business, like, People are buying me. Um, so your art is very personal. It's your creative outlet. And so like having that fear that like no one's going to like it and like thinking about it so much can really like hold us back because, you know, it's like the, you know, kids bringing my, their art to me and they're like wanting my approval for it. And, you know, really like it's getting to that, like, okay, it's, it's all good with me. And then whatever happens with anybody else is just icing on the cake. Um, but yeah, so it, Cheryl, thank you for saying that because that's being totally vulnerable and I really appreciate you putting it out there. Um, so I don't know if that feels good to you with like a fear audit or asking yourself why or anything like that that we've talked about so far. If maybe, you know, that's just like something that can, you know, like, okay, what's the worst thing? Like if, you know, thinking about that and then going back to like the fear inventory with what the worst thing is that could happen. Um, so let me know if any of that's helpful or if you need like something else to think about there. Um, but I like to go into the third step of shake it off. Taylor Swift played the song in the car all the time, but really like after doing a fear inventory or a fear audit or journaling, I like to move. Like I just really like to like either dance. I have some songs I listen to and I just kind of dance around. I also have an app on my phone. It's pause, P-A-U-S-E. Like if you hit the pause button, um, it's the most expensive app I've ever bought. It's like, I think 60 something a year, but I literally use it every day and it's like breath work. Um, so they have three minute, five minute, 10 minute things. They have 25 and 45 minute things. And one of the 10 minute ones I love is this like release and you're standing up and you're just like breathing and moving and you know, she's kind of like stomp your feet or, you know, do whatever feels good and like I'm just like breathing you know I've got my door closed no one can see me it's early in the morning everyone's asleep but that's what I love to just like let it out like okay I let it out on the paper I just you know threw my heart down and all my fears and now I just need to like do that like somatic release or you know whatever people call it but it's really just that like movement like okay I've got it on the paper now I have to move it through my body breathe move and like set that intention because you know, we can do a walk or we can do a workout, but if we're not moving our body and setting the intention to really move those feelings and thoughts through, then like they can kind of still be stuck. Um, obviously I'm not the like most trained person on this. I'm an accountant. Like I know there are other people out there like Reiki and all that stuff that, um, really can like speak to it. But like, I know that the science is there and I just know what works with people and like my kids seeing them, you know, like doing that release, like I like swing my arms and breathe. Um, I'm trying to think there's some YouTube videos I like too that are like not Tai Chi, but they're kind of like Taekwon, is that what it's called? Or Ki Kwan? I'm totally butchering it, but um I know what she looks like, but I don't know what it is right now. But it still looks like breath and swinging your arms. And so I think that after we do the work, we get it out there on the paper, we do the mind stuff, then it's like, okay, move your body. And then from there. I like to thank my brain and say, you're so silly brain or thank you so much for doing your job because our brains like, they're like a dog with a bone. Like they need something to chew on. Like I can give my dog one of those, um, kind of white, I don't know what they're called, whatever that is, or a stick. Like she'll sit there and just gnaw and chew on that thing. And that's how our brains are with like a problem or a fear or anxiety. Like if we can give it like something better to chew on than like, we can just like improve our lives so much. So just letting our brain know, like, thank you. I got it from here. You don't have to keep me safe. Like I am safe and thinking about like how I'm safe right now. Like, okay, even if nobody buys my stuff or nobody likes my post or nobody shows up to my live stream, you know, like I will still be safe. Life will go on. I'll be good. Thank you for trying to keep me safe. But like, that's not a reason to stop. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about there. Um, 
Thank you, grateful. Yeah. So, like, this is where I go in with the dog chewing on a bone thing. Like, what can I think about and give my brain that? So, what I like to do is kind of think about my content. Like, I plan my content out weeks in advance. I plan these live streams out weeks in advance. You know, we do, um, I guess that's about it. Live streams every week. I feel like there's something else. I do my Instagram stories. Um, oh, Cheryl says, I like that idea. Oh, good. Don't know exactly which one that was, but maybe it was talking about the fear audit or the, um, I don't know when, which one we were talking about there, but I'm glad that you like it. But, um, you know, giving your brain something more productive to think about. So like thinking about these live streams in advance and what I want to talk about or what my content might be focused on one week. And so instead of like letting my brain chew on the problem of, what if no one buys or what if no one likes it or any of that fear stuff that we have, like give it something productive um, so that it can get inspired. So I know, you know, Cheryl, you might be inspired all the time with art, but I know for me, I like to like give my brain time and a reason to get inspired. So when I sit down to write content, I like to have that idea ahead of time before I sit down to a blank document and start writing stuff. Because if I've already like, have a theme for the week in my head. And then as I'm going through my day, I pick up little ideas or conversations with clients or free calls that I can drop into my document and I can have like ideas and inspiration so that when I sit down, I'm like, oh yeah, look at all these ideas I have and then go from there. But um, so using your brain, it wanting to solve a problem, like give it something like that. Oh, Cheryl says, shake it off and thinking my brain. Yeah, <laughs> shaking it off is like, the answer to everything um yeah and just thanking your brain because um our brains tell us some funny stuff and we don't have to believe it I think I have a post um that I've written I don't think it's come out yet but it's definitely about my kids and like them calling each other names and my response is always the same like this morning like one of my girls called the other one stupid and she's like so and so called me stupid and it's like well are you stupid and she's like no and it's like well you don't have to believe her like just because she called you that doesn't mean you have to believe it. And so our brains are the same way. Like just because it's telling us something, we can just be like, thank you, but I got it. Um, so number four, yeah, thank yourself. And then number five, um, give your previous self what he or she needs. And so I like to use this because a lot of times we can just write a letter to that person that is scared or that has the anxiety or is afraid of not being, you know, people not selling their stuff and just like giving them what they need. Um, and I know this is very like eye roll and I've definitely eye rolled it and then I did it and it felt really good. So like the example I gave of, um, you know, being the accountant that didn't want to sell, like I wrote, you know, previous Jordan who heard that from the accountants, like wrote her a letter just being like, yeah, like that was like 20 years ago, <laughs> you know, that I heard that, like, that at the time, you know, was very well intentioned and what these people knew to be true. And, you know, this is like 20 years later and, you know, just seeing that like, there's that gap between who learned this or who believed it or who was told that. And then like where you are now and just writing them a letter that like, it's okay. Like, thank you. You were doing the best you could. Those were very well intentioned people. Um, you know, they did the best they were doing and just writing a letter to that person and letting them know. Um, with the thing with the, my parents' divorce, I wrote my like 12 year old self a letter and just gave her what she needed for that. Um, so, you know, it sounds, it's very kind of woo and like, you know, people don't want to do it, but it's just so helpful. So picturing who that person is, what she looks like, what she's wearing, her hair, what she likes, and just like write them a letter and say, thank you, appreciate you, and you know, you're safe and we can move on. Um, and you know, obviously not saying like, we have to move on now, but you know, just giving them that like um, recognition that they need. It can be short and sweet, thank you for the hearts. It can be short and sweet, it can be long and detailed, like whatever to really acknowledge that person, um, you know, previous you, and just like acknowledge them and give them space. Um, so yeah, I like to say, I like to go back to different versions of Jordan. Um, you know, I'm in my forties. So like there's tons of different versions of me and I always like to go back and thank her for whatever she learned at a certain time. And, um, you know, thank her for, you know, okay, you carried that forward. You don't have to do that anymore. 
Um, so that's the fifth step. So the sixth step, sixth, um, it's almost the last one, but it's the choose again. So we know that you have that thought. We know you have that belief. You've put it on paper. You've moved. You've worked through it. You've talked to that person who learned it or created it. And so now it's like, okay, now what are we going to choose? Um, we have to replace it to, with something like our brain likes to be filled up with stuff and, you know, or we can't just like let things go and then like our brain stays this empty container. Like it needs to be filled and replaced with something. So that's what I like to think about. What do you choose to believe instead? Um, and so this is kind of when I talked about like, okay, I don't know if accountants should show up online and sell or is that sleazy or does anybody want to hear what I have to say? You know, thinking about like, I actually have a lot of good things to say and people like really are glad to hear it. Like I'm very personable and I try to explain things clearly and like saying what my new thoughts would be and replacing them. So whenever I'm like, does anyone want to hear me talk about gross profit online? Like, you know, and I have to replace it with like, actually the right person who needs to hear it is going to hear it. You know, and so figuring out what you're going to believe instead, instead of just pushing that thought away and working through it, like what's the new thought that serves you better where you are. So, you know, if we want to go back to the art and like thinking no one's going to like it or no one's going to buy it, you know, really like the right people want to buy this. Like it's going to improve their home. It's going to be such a beautiful gift for them to give someone like, you know, picturing them and who they are and how it improves their lives. Like that's the new thought you can carry forward and then you know whatever that other stuff comes back up going through the process and like choosing again so we can do like that long process of choosing again or I choose again like 50 times a day like I have a thought come up and it's like nope this is my new thought like I'm literally trying to brainwash myself you know and I say brainwash in a good way in the best way possible like really changing the brain changing the story and creating a new one um, so I gave an example of thought and choosing online. Yeah, so no one wants to read what therapist has to say online. There are actually a lot of people out there who are confused and need a trustworthy person who can, you know, explain things in a simple manner. So that would be the example I give of, you know, how you can reframe and choose again. Yes, trying to get the right people, LOL. Yeah, and that's what we're all trying to do. And that's like the beauty of the internet and the beauty of, you know, this time or in these days like um you know i talked to a lady in india the other day and you know, i'm like that's crazy like i mean she didn't use the same accounting software so i couldn't really help her with that we talked about revenue growth which is universal so um to me that was just amazing like yeah she's in india and somehow we connected and um you know she's the right person i can't help her with the quickbook stuff but you know, the other stuff is universal. So Cheryl, I totally hear you finding the right people, but that is where like content marketing is so great and being online and showing up and putting yourself out there and selling because I've seen artists, you know, post stuff online and it's like, yeah, that's pretty, but like it doesn't ever occur to me to buy it because they're not selling it. Like I'm like, okay, yeah, what a beautiful painting. But like until they say something like you could have this in your house or it could improve your walls, you know, and improve your view in the morning while you're drinking your coffee. Like, it, like I don't connect those dots. And so, um, yeah, that's just like a little something you can think about is you're um, finding the right people. And then the last one is just rinse, repeat, and refine. So this is never over. Like, it's not like we go through this and we're like, done. I never have to do this again. Give myself a pat on the back. Like, we're always doing this. So I love the saying, new level, new devil. Um, and also sometimes it's new level, same devil. So it's kind of the same stuff we're dealing with that each new level, it gets kicked up again in a different way. Um, and so not making yourself wrong for that and definitely like giving yourself permission, like, oh, I already worked through this. I thought I was done. Um, I'm up leveling my income, my clients, and now it's getting kicked up again. And like knowing that like, yeah, that just, that just might be what happens. Um, and not making yourself wrong. Um, because once we think we're done, like we're never actually done. We're human beings. We are continually growing, continually experiencing new things. So um, I think it's just so important that, you know, you don't feel bad or beat yourself up if you have to do this process multiple times, do it with the same thing, um, whatever it is, like we're just always works in process. So good to know I should mention they are for sale for <laughs> you. Yeah.
that's a key thing. Um, one of the main things I talk to people about is like, yeah, uh, you know, you got to sell. Um, and so that's why I think this is so important today is that if anything is coming up with selling around that, like you can work through it and like be vocal that like, yeah, I'm selling. Like, yes, I love art and I love the craft of art, but I'm also a business owner. I am here to sell. I'm here to make money. You know, like that's not the only reason I do this. And doing the art isn't the only thing that reason I do this. Like they coexist together. Like I can love the art and I can make money. Um, so yeah, being actively selling, letting people know where they can buy from you, you know, make it easy for them, lead them to you because that's another thing with working through all this is that I see people show up online and they're selling, but they're really not selling. Like they're making it hard for people to find them. They're not really telling about their offers. I know for a long time um, with the bookkeeping, I didn't put pricing on my website and I still don't because it's still so like hard. Um, like just because someone has the same number of accounts as someone else, like they might run a ton of personal stuff through it or they might have a really complicated sales tax process that we have to like manually put together. Um, and so that's why I don't do that. But it was hard for me to like put pricing on my website because it's just like out there. But like if you're not putting your prices out there and you're not actively talking about it, then people always assume the worst and think that it's like, well, it must be really expensive, you know, if you don't put your prices out there. So um, that's just something I've seen with people online and selling and their art, and especially when it's something they created. Um, so just a little side tangent there. Um, well, that's basically it. We'll go through the steps again. Um, so it's, scroll to the top, noticing and asking why and asking why at least five times, um, calling out the fears. So really doing a fear inventory. Thank you for the thumbs up. Um, doing the fear inventory, getting it out there, not trying to push it down and hide it, but just like let it out and then like releasing it, shaking it off, moving your body, breathing, whatever feels good to you to like clear it. And then we're talking about thanking your brain. Thank you for doing its job. Like. Our brains are here to keep us safe. They're here to like help us be part of a group and procreate. And that's basically it. Um, so anything that feels scary outside of that, the brain's gonna like want to hold you back. Um, so we can just thank the brain for doing its job. We all have great brains. Um, and they're just doing what it's here to do. And then give your previous self what he or she needs. Write that letter to that person wherever that belief came from or whoever taught you something or whatever experience you, you had that taught you something, like write them a letter and like thank them for that experience and knowing that like we're safe now, I got it from here and we'll move on. Um, and then choosing again, creating that new thought, lovingly brainwashing yourself so that your brain is not the same as it was at the time that that thought or belief was created. Like we can really create new thoughts um, the creator reality and then rinse, repeat, refine. So do what works for you. Um, figure out like any tweaks or changes, you know, like I got this stuff from like tons of different people and put it all together. And so as you go on your journey, you'll find stuff from other people that you like or that you want to add. Um, so be sure you make it work for you and your schedule and your life and all that stuff. So, um, I'm so excited to have shared this with you. I will drop that quote in the comments um, and we'll be giving away a free coaching session. As a reminder, you know, I support my clients with like high level one-to-one -one, and we also do a couple intensive every month um, with a week of support. So I do two of those a month and they usually sell out. So um, grab spots if you want them, but um, DM me, send me messages, comments, anything on the replay, let me know. Glad to be here and support you. And thank you so much for coming. We'll be back next week with another live stream. And y'all stay safe if you're in Charleston. Um, you know, hopefully it won't be too bad, but sending you lots of love and safety. So I'll see you next week. I'll share all thanks. Great tips. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I know you could be a million other places. So I really appreciate um, everyone who joined today and your thumbs up and your hearts and likes. It means a lot to me. So, um, and if you have ideas coming up, always plan out these live streams ahead of time. But if you have an idea or something you want to see work done, be sure to let me know and I'll see you next week. Thanks.